Hello, uh, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, this is Roberto Rodriguez, and this is my presentation for historiography 879 about uh, Gian Battista Vico. The picture that you see here uh, is a picture I think I took from one of the encyclopedia. Uh, he, this guy is Gian Battista Vico. He was a historian, philosopher, and professor of rhetorics uh, who published a few works during his lifetime, but whose major historiographical work was Science Nuova, or the New Science in 1726, in which he made an attempt to include all humanities into a single science. This presentation is going to be a little bit different from my written essay uh, because here I would like to discuss something that got my attention while reading about Biko. And one of the aspects that called my attention was that Biko's history was a cyclical history, uh, more or less in the same way as Karl Marx, although, I mean, Karl Marx created a cyclical history, but uh, Biko was different. Uh, Karl Marx um, created the thought that history was a succession of stages that eventually led to uh, scientific communism, where everybody was, uh, was extremely happy. <laughs> um, but he concentrated most in the capitalist uh, stage, uh, where there was a great contradiction. Uh, Jean Battista Vico also saw the world as cyclical, but uh, in a different way, in a much different way than, than, than Marx. Uh, he thought that each society went through three different stages. Uh, and, and so every society had the same uh, growth, the same development and the same death. Uh, so that's the only uh, the only similarity with Marx. Some of the encyclopedias that I consulted mentioned that uh, the Inquisition was something that was going on at the time that Vico wrote his new science. And they even speculated that Vico may not have been as religious as he portrayed himself and as he has been understood by most almost everybody that uh, studied him, uh, but that he may have written the new science with the purpose of uh, avoiding uh, his work to be placed on the index of the Catholic Church that was uh, uh, then a, a work that was uh, uh, supposed uh, not to be published, something that was banned uh, by the Catholic Church. I found this uh, extremely interesting. I, I don't think that was the case. Uh, I think that uh, uh, this guy was a, a profoundly religious person that mixed his uh, very religious conviction with the idea of this analysis of history that he wanted to do. It's in, in doubt, I mean, without any doubt, uh, his science, it was a religious science from beginning to end, but also he, he made an attempt to establish a scientific a historical method. Yeah, here I explain what I found uh, in, in the different uh, sources that um, that he may have been concerned uh, with his work not being placed in the Inquisition uh, because he started his history. I mean, he used the, the genesis and the beginning of man, the creation of man as the beginning of his history, but then uh, goes through until Noah's Ark and then the rebeginning of humanity. So, and that's when he starts uh, creating his three 
uh, stages or the three ages uh, that he qualifies as the age of God, the age um, that is a, a theological, uh, with a theological government, uh, the age of, um, uh, that, that ends up with the age of reason where there is a democracy. I doubt that there was a democracy at the time that he was living, but in any event, it was three, the, the middle, um, the middle stage was characterized by warriors, uh, people, um, an aristocratic uh, warrior uh, society. The, um, all these explanations uh, comes from three fundamental uh, aspects that all society have to deal with. And one is uh, religion, marriage, and burials. Um, he divides history, as I said before, in three stages, the age of gods, the age of heroes, and the age of humans. In reality, this division that he is made uh, was not invented by himself. Uh, he uh, says in, in the New Science that it was Herodotus who uh, first thought about this situation. So what he did was elaborate this idea and, and give it a, a scientific uh, framework. That was, uh, uh, he didn't take any stand about whether uh, history uh, was, well, yes, I think that he did. He said that the history was cyclical, but at the same time, society was advancing. However, all of this history was uh, somehow um, ordered or oversaw uh, by God, by a divine uh, providence. So those are three, um, three quotes that I got from three, uh, I mean, from two of his uh, um, prime uh, sources. Uh, he wrote, for example, in the work that he, about the, on the most ancient wisdom of the Italians, that the truth itself is made. This seems like a circular uh, idea, but he says, well, you know, uh, the humanities need explanation uh, that and the historian does that through observation. He was very much against Descartes' idea that uh, the only knowledge uh, that had validity uh, was uh, the natural science and the, with the experimentation and creation. He, he found other ways by which uh, humanity or people could investigate, um, in this case, history uh, and the institutions and come to, to a realization or, or you know, uh, of how uh, things work. Oh, this is uh, my reference list that I used. As I said, this is a little bit different than my than my oral presentation, I decided to go here into a little bit about Marx and also about the Inquisition and his potential effect. But his main contribution was he created a preliminary form of historicism and his historio historiographical contribution was a cyclical view of history um, that uh, was made by men. That's why men could write about history, because men created history. Uh, but overall, uh, everything was uh, uh, led by God. Uh, I don't know if he did it uh, um, because he was convinced of that or he wanted to avoid the Inquisition, but I think that he was, uh, he was a fervent uh, religious uh, individual. Uh, thanks very much, and I appreciate your attention. Bye-bye.